I'm Julia Strout from the University of South Carolina. And I'm Bryce Rogan from Pomona College. We are here at the Amalthea RU, where we are trying to classify anirin calls using deep learning. Anirins, also known as frogs and toads, are excellent bioindicators, meaning their health is representative of their habitats. This is because they have highly permeable skin and live biphasic lives, half on water and half on land. They constantly absorb toxins through their skin, and as their habitats become more polluted, their numbers decline. One way to monitor frog populations is by recording their calls in the field. Our project will support an application that allows users to use their smartphones to classify frog calls, greatly increasing the amount of data scientists can use to track our ecosystems. Our goal is to identify a frog species based on its call, and we want to use deep learning to accomplish this. The field of deep learning strives to algorithmically model human cognition. When humans look at an object, they first notice the most important features, like general shape, size, and color. The longer they look at something, the more specific their observations become until they can decide exactly what they are seeing. Deep learning replicates this process in the form of neural networks. Some input is sent to the network, and the nodes in the early layers detect general features, while the deeper layers find more specific patterns until the network ultimately has enough information to offer a classification. Convolutional neural networks are a specific form of deep learning that are designed to handle the large dimensionality of image data. They contain multiple types of layers that aim to search for features within an image and reduce the dimensionality. So why do we want to use deep learning? Well, in all previous attempts at classifying frog calls, the researchers have had to pre-select and extract features from their sound data. This adds a human variable to the success of their research and is a step we want to eliminate. By using deep learning, we will allow the algorithm to decide what features are most important for classification. In order to use a convolutional neural network, we had to transform our sound data into image data. To do this, we turned our frog calls into spectrograms. Spectrograms are graphical representation of sound data with frequency over time, and color encoding the energy. We then used two techniques to train a CNN. The first technique was cutting the spectrograms into overlapping windows. The second was to segment the calls into the individual syllables. We then fed these images into our CNN implementation and trained it. What became apparent is that deep networks need large quantities of data to train, something we don't have. To combat this issue, we use transfer learning. Transfer learning is the idea of using a network trained for one task for a new task. We use networks that were previously trained on the millions of images in the ImageNet database as feature extractors. We then fed these features to a support vector machine for classification. After the features were extracted, the SVN's classification accuracies had a mean of 84%, a median of 86%, and a max of 91%. This used a voting mechanism to classify calls in their totality by taking the prediction for each syllable within a call, and then determining the class of the entire call by choosing the species with the most votes. These results prove the effectiveness of deep learning for classifying and neuron calls. This will allow for a stronger application, helping scientists to better monitor and understand our ecosystems. And remember, the next time you go frog watching, a happy frog is a happy planet.